What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we got a good one for you. I'm looking forward to this because we will be discussing all things that have to do with the natural hair of the black queens. But I'm not going to get into the detail. I'm going to let our special guests get more into depth about all things natural hair because today ladies and gentlemen we are joined by francis aka fran founder and owner of college curls how are you i'm good i'm good i'm happy to be here i'm looking forward to it thank you i'm happy that you're here and we're going to get straight into it um college curls go ahead and break down to the people what it is and where it came from all right so college curls is my natural hair education brand Mm -hmm. um right now it's Mainly the YouTube channel that tends to get the most focus. Um, it has about 16,000 subscribers. And on my YouTube channel, I make animated natural hair content. So natural hair cartoons, to put it simply, just to make the education of natural hair more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted something that I felt like kind of stood out from your average uh, I think it's called talking head videos where it's just your head in front of the camera and mm-hmm. people doing their hair and talking. So the YouTube channel is completely animated so you can get the information. And then on the Instagram side of things, um, that's where I post kind of more of myself doing hair, more TikToks, still natural hair education and information, but you see more of me. And on the Patreon as well, you see more of me. But yeah, it's my natural hair education brand that I started when I was in college. Um, Hence why I was called College Curls then. But now um, I have felt the name of the brand has changed more to mean natural hair information. So college is more of basically the idea of learning natural hair, learning the curls Mm -hmm. versus me being in college still. Okay, I like it. All right, so let's, let's kind of break that down, starting with the YouTube, which, like you said, 16,000 wow subscribers. Yes, that thing is booming. I peeked that, and I liked it. <laughs> what I liked, which you covered already, is how you said you have, like, the animated videos that kind of uh, grabs the audience attention in a different way. Um, so was that the sole reason that you did that? And I asked because that's, for one, is different, which stands out. Because, like you said, everyone's talking in front of a camera and whatnot, and there may be people who don't like speaking in front of a camera. And Mm -hmm. that's a great alternative that you did. So how did you even come up with doing that alternative? Right. So at first I did start out just doing regular talking head videos. And um, when I, that was when I was first starting my natural hair journey, I was super passionate about it. And I mean, of course I was nervous when I was putting up my first videos and all that, but I was just super excited and I didn't mind putting in the work and recording, washing my hair and things like that. Um, But then after doing it for a few years, um, I wouldn't say I necessarily got tired of it, but it did become routine. It Mm -hmm. became very routine and it seemed like, I I mean, yeah, I guess I did lose a little bit of passion for doing it um, the way that I was doing it in the beginning. And I felt like I wanted to do something different. I wanted my YouTube channel to stand out and for it to pop and for it to have a reason to go viral. Um, And I felt like at the time when I was first going natural, this was, well, it wasn't early 2000s. It was early like 2010. So like what I want to say, like 2014, 2015, something like that. Mm. Um, The people who are really going viral were uh, honestly more of like the mixed looking girls with the looser type of hair, or if you had a whole, whole lot of hair, um, and I was kind of just getting started and just getting there. So my hair, it had gotten some length, but I don't know. I just felt like my channel didn't really have something to make it pop so much. Mm. So I was thinking like, what can I do to make things different? What can I do to bring back my passion from what I'm doing to make it interesting? And um, I honestly don't know how I settled on cartoons. If I'm being completely honest, I have always really liked cartoons. Like even besides being a kid, being older, when I was in school, like at, in college, it was on Adult Swim all the time, watching Rick and Morty, my favorite all-time show ever. Um, that's actually how I learned how to animate. I found videos on YouTube of the animators of Rick and Morty breaking it down. And I watched those and I um, taught myself through Adobe After Effects tutorials. But I don't know. I just always, for some reason, had a passion for liking cartoons. And I was like, I just want to learn how to animate. It seems mm-hmm. super cool. I love it so much. So that's how I end up teaching myself how to do that. And um, it's been pretty good since. Um, People, they definitely enjoy it. 
they enjoyed the talking head videos before because they were like, oh, you're so informative and mm -hmm. I love how you give so much information. You break it down so well. But now that connected with the cartoons, people just feel like um, it's the best of both worlds a little bit, I guess. Yeah, it brings <laughs> out a whole different aspect as far as them staying tuned to it. Okay, let's rewind. You said your favorite cartoon of all time is Rick and Morty. Absolutely. Top three on my list. So I got to ask you, your favorite Rick and Morty episode as of today? Oh, wow. My favorite Rick and Morty episode has always been, I cannot even think of the name of it or even what season it's in, mm -hmm. but it's the one where they have like, a, um, uh, what's that called? When people go around killing every, the purge. Oh, the purge yes. one. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and Morty just went crazy. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is yeah. my favorite episode. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. I like that <laughs> one. My favorite is the, uh, where like it, it didn't show the main Rick and Morty's. It was like the Citadel. Oh, and it mm -hmm. had like the training day thing where you had yeah. the dirty Morty that was yeah yeah that's my favorite episode. I like that one too. Yeah, I like at the end with the evil Morty. My fault, y'all. We had a we had a little Rick and Morty geek episode right there. Um, oh, gotta love it. Yeah. So I right, boom. So first and foremost, thinking outside the box with bringing the animation in, that's very creative. Okay, so let's get into when the natural hair journey first started. What even made you want to begin that journey to begin with? Mm -hmm. Um, I will say for me, I believe I said, okay, I went natural going into my junior year of high school. I graduated in 2015. So that had to be around 2013, 2014, something like that. That was at least when I started transitioning. I wasn't one of those girls who was just like big chop, didn't care about to be bald headed. No, that wasn't me. Oh, you didn't do the big chop? I, okay. I technically did, but I wasn't, I didn't just shave my yeah. head. I had like at least a good four inches of hair up there. Okay. Um, I know, the, I know that time, that even though even though you said it wasn't a big, big chop, any time, especially in high school, whenever a girl did a big chop, that was brutal. Yeah. Well, I kind of did it a little, at least smart, in my opinion, because I went to two different high schools. Uh, I went to Philip O'Berry for two years, and then I went to um, an early college for two years. Mm -hmm. So it, it was 11th and 12th grade. I was at the early college. I was like, well, I don't really know nobody here. Whatever. I'm just about to cut my hair off and mm -hmm. it just is going to be what it is. And yeah. I was thinking if I play this right, by the time I get to college, I will have some hair. And I played it right. <laughs> so Thinking ahead. I like it. Right. Um, but the reason I even decided to go natural was it was something that was trending at the time or at least starting to trend. Um, what really prompted me, I know there was a girl that I went to Barry with and she had went natural, I remember, and we had an English class together. And that was really the first time I even felt like I was really introduced to it for real, which seems so weird. But um, she had big chopped, like big chopped, big chopped, and her hair was super short and people were picking on her and all that, but she did not care. She was still proud. And I was just like, wow, like, and that's when I had started to learn more about it. And I was like, okay, I think I would want to do this whole natural thing. Um. I didn't even really necessarily have a super deep reason because I like wanted long hair or wanted healthier hair or anything like that. It just seemed like something I wanted to do to see what I could do with it. And I was just interested in it. Um, that girl had prompted my interest in it. And um, when I did end up going natural, like doing the transition and things like that, like kind of how I was saying before, I completely enjoyed it. I loved it so much, just learning more about my hair and how to care for it and how to grow it and just being natural or at least the way, okay, at least the way that I was caring for my hair before, I feel like being natural forced me to learn how to care for my hair. Mm. Whereas being relaxed didn't necessarily do do that for me so much. Um, why, why so? Like was relaxed, you just kind of did it and that was it? Yeah, mm. I kind of feel like that's, that's the journey of a lot of black girls with their hair. I feel like we get relaxers at a young age where we don't necessarily even have a say so about it. Mm -hmm. um, our, just because it's easier for our parents, for our moms to do our hair, um, they may or may not know some things here and there about keeping it healthy and helping it to grow and things like that. But it's not like you're being taught in depth, do this routine because this is going to help with growth and this is going to keep it moisturized and this is going to do this and this is going to do that. At least that wasn't my experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and from having worked with people to help them grow their hair, that hasn't really been their experience either. So yeah, at least, um, for me going natural, it was just, I feel like my first big self project at a young age. And so it really had me to really kind of start discovering who I was and self identifying and things like that. It was interesting. Nice. So it sounds <laughs> like it's a lot of, 
um, it's a lot of power and energy in 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 hair, natural hair. Yeah, yeah. in hair, period. But definitely natural hair for Black women, mm -hmm. for sure. Nice. And I say that especially the energy part because a question that I have for you that I've wanted to ask this for a minute. So many times, and you even, uh, I even know a few, you know, women in person that did this, but um, one of the reasons for a big chop is because, you know, you want to start over natural and whatnot. And mm -hmm. another thing that you see women kind of have a big chop for is because they kind of go through something and they mm -hmm. said they had bad energy in that hair. So they had to cut it off. Right. right. You've seen or heard that before, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, I have. I have. So is that true? Like, does it really like, I'm, like, is it like the root? Of his hair can hair in a way be like the root of energy and you truly feel it mm. and cutting it off or doing whatever to it really brings like a whole new vibe just shifts your chakra in a, in a better way right so um i feel like i don't necessarily want to speak for everyone experience but at least from the way that i feel like i interpret it i'll say that for one i feel like i'm the type of person who believes everything holds energy mm -hmm. um especially anything that is growing how could it not have energy? Right. Um, so I feel like when I have seen girls who want to cut off all of their hair because they're going through a breakup or a big transformation or mm -hmm. they feel like they're just reinventing themselves or something like that, I feel like for women in society, we are obviously scrutinized all the time for our physical appearance. And one of those things is our hair. And usually women will hold on to hair whether they feel like they really want to keep it or not because society will look at you a certain way if you don't have hair. Unless you like some, what society deems to be this super bad bald-headed woman like Amber Rose or something. Mm -hmm. But other yeah. than that, like usually having hair on your head as a woman. Like Jada. Say like Jada for instance. Right, Jada. Yeah. That's a good example yeah. too, yeah. Yeah. Um. That's that's a really a great example because even she was talked about for having after cut her hair and like uh, being bald now and people trying to act like she's less beautiful and this and that. Um. But I do I do feel like it's because of the stigma society has placed on women to either have hair or not have hair that it seems like it holds so much power for a woman when she does decide I'm just getting rid of it I'm just starting over I'm just being me I feel like it can really be seen as a big F you to society and to anyone else um and even an F you to your old self and who you thought you were mm. to be like okay I'm I'm just going to start over and try to be authentically me mm -hmm. so I think it does hold energy in that way, yeah. for sure. And something deep within it as well. I get what you're saying with that, because it can bring confidence. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because being bald, yeah, you got to be confident to have that. I mean, man or woman, but of course, especially for women and whatnot. All right, so let's get informed a little bit. What are some things that may be more so detrimental than, than beneficial towards black women's hair that maybe we don't realize, but you kind of see on a regular Hmm. Okay. One of the biggest things that I love to harp on, I will say I have changed my stance a little as of late, but something I have always felt like was wigs, weaves, long-term protective styles. Um, do not get me wrong. And that's because that's, you see that more, more, it's, usually you see that more than natural hair, especially now. Mm -hmm. Cause like we said, you see it portrayed on social media right. and on TV. Absolutely. It's like everyone has that same look, right? So they yeah. try to go for it, but you're saying that's okay. I, okay. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it is wrong because I know there's going to be thousands of people who are going to be like, oh my gosh, you can grow your hair and it's fine. And you absolutely can. Mm -hmm. You can wear wigs and weaves and long-term protective styles and have super healthy hair. Like mm -hmm. I am a big proponent of that. I don't do a lot of um, that myself just because I have so much hair and it's a lot of work, but it absolutely can work. But what I see happening more often than not is people don't know how to take care of their hair already without having these styles in. So they go to these styles as their saving grace because they believe, oh, my hair is braided up under this style. And in the black community, I've noticed we think braids are the be all end all of hair growth and taking care of your hair, which it is. But at the same time, you still have to know to take care of your hair because you can have your hair in braids all day long under your wigs, under your weaves, in your box braids and your Senegalese twists, whatever you want to have. But if you still don't know how to take care of it underneath it, without it on, braids or not, it's not going to help. If anything, it'll start hurting. Mm. And braids do hurt. I used to have braids. <laughs> <laughs> they do hurt. I used to have cornrows. <laughs> I was tender-headed as hell, too. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I tried it. But, hey, that was, like, back in, like, uh, 
like 04, 05. You got. Oh, well, yeah, that was the time for that then. Ludacris, Bow Wow, AI, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So everyone tried to keep up. Um, so, how do you take care of it underneath of all of that? So, okay. And then I also like to say that there's no one size fits all solution. Mm -hmm. So, but just a general wise of taking care of your hair when it's underneath that of course it's going to depend on the current condition of your hair it's going to depend on how well you take care of your body overall and things like that but if we're talking about hair that's in a decently good condition you don't have any serious damage you know your characteristics relatively well all you should really need to do is moisturize your scalp you can well if it's underneath a wig if it's underneath the wig, you want to be sure that your hair is in good condition already pretty much before it really goes under there, especially if you're going to be keeping it on for a while, depending on what type of wig it is. Um, you want a deep condition first. Uh, you don't want your braid to be too tight. You don't, of course, don't want the wig glue. You want the wig to be on right. You don't want glue all up on your hair, messing up your edges and things like that. Um, but moisturize your scalp if you can. If you can, take it off. Um massage your scalp you can do a spray leave-in conditioner you can do oil it's really just going to depend on the person and things like that but water for sure a spray leave-in conditioner some oil if you have box braids or senegalese twists or any sort of like braided long-term protective style it's really going to be the same thing of being sure that you're moisturizing being sure also that overnight you have on some type of bonnet or silk or, silk or satin scarf or silk or satin pillowcase just anything that's going to prevent your hair from getting super dried out. And then on top of that, that helps to make your style last longer. So mm. it's honestly simple steps, usually simple things at the end of the day, but it's just that um, people don't know. And that's why I work to make my brand educational and entertaining so that it keeps your attention and so that you actually remember what it is that you need to do. Mm. But then, I mean, of course, you also need to know your hair because what works for me won't necessarily work for you. <laughs> yeah, because some people got some shit that kind of lay down a little better than, you know, some people be working with some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Fran up here dropping gems. You getting them right. But hey, that's just a small dosage of college curls. There you go. Um, Three things that you mentioned, bonnet, food, and water that I definitely want to uh, um, touch on. Mm. But real quick, we talking about the hair. Let's talk about edges too for a second, right? Because <laughs> I know what edges are. I know uh -huh. what it looks like. Listen, I'm getting informed up here myself right. too. Like if guys seriously, don't know anything. They know we edges. We don't. You name some type of braid, silica, silica what, what was it called? Oh, Senegalese. You said that shit. That's a five dollar word. I've never heard that before, <laughs> right? Probably seen it, but I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, let's talk about edges. Because I mean, as as a man. When the edges are laid down, that's a beautiful thing, mm. right? So again, mm. ladies, we're looking out for y'all with this one. What are some ways, what are some better ways to take care of the edges and make mm. sure that they don't go bye-bye? Great. So my one thing that I love to recommend, Jamaican black castor oil mm. for your edges, um, for your hair in general. Jamaican black castor oil has been scientifically proven that its ash content promotes growth. And I have my own personal testimonies that people in my family do, that my clients that I work with do, even guys when they ask me about growing their beard or growing their mustache. Um, but edges, Jamaican black castor oil is a saving grace. Considering you're already healthy and doing other things that you need to do, it won't take you from, you know, you've been coloring your hair and damaging it in all these ways to now magically seeing growth. But Jamaican black castor oil is a great, great way. And then of course, um, just, besides as far as like doing things to um, actually promote the growth of your edges, I feel like it's great to do things to promote growth. It's great to do things um, to try and force an outcome, but at the same time, taking care of what's already there will do far more than trying to force something, mm. especially when you haven't been taking care of it already. So like you said, edges are a beautiful thing and it mm -hmm. is great to have some nice laid edges. But if you're someone who is constantly putting gel on your edges, maybe take a break for a day. Mm. You can get you a nice little head scarf, head wrap thing um, to put on over your edges or you can just brush your edges up that day. Like I feel like um, as black women too, there is this kind of pressure to always be, I don't want to say hyper femme, but to keep up a very put together feminine look. 
a lot of the times, mm -hmm. whereas other races, you don't have to see them with the laid edges and all this and mm -hmm. that, and you they can still be portrayed as beautiful. But with black women, it just seems like they feel like they have to go over the top. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. I love mm -hmm. going over the top myself, but over the top can be damaging at times. So maybe hold back on the super harsh gels, go a day or two without doing the edges. When you do do the edges, um, try to use a gel that is going to be a little bit on the healthier side. Uh, water-based if you can, if that'll work with your hair, but if not, try to find something that isn't going to really cake up and start clogging your pores and then preventing any progress that you've seen. Mm, got you. I like it. And I really like the black castor oil. That's what I use on my beard and whatnot. So oh, as far as far as brands, as far as brands for the black castor oil, let me ask you, because um, I get mine from Walmart. It's I forgot the name of the brand. They sell it in beauty supplies and Walmart. But another brand that's maybe, I don't know as much now as it used to be that's heavy in the black community is Shea Moisture. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on Shea Moisture? Is mm -hmm. that good for us to use or not? Because from what I've heard, it's not even black owned. Right, Shea Moisture isn't black owned. And when I did find that out, it was like, dang, a shot through the heart. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I still use them. That is still the brand that I most prominently use on my hair just because it works for me. Okay. I do hate that it's not black owned, but they they have good ingredients. They have so many different lines that can work for so many different hair types and they can do it based on your porosity level, which is basically um, how your hair absorbs moisture. They have stuff for low porosity, high porosity, average porosity. They have things for thicker hair. They have things for thinner hair. Like they have just such a wide range of products. Um, so I do feel like when people are just getting started or if they're not exactly sure where to turn, Shea Moisture is a solid option, mm. black owned or not. But I feel like um, if we do want to go more black owned, Carol's Daughter, I think is another great option. They have a wide array. As I Am is another great one that I love. Um, ooh, a Miel Organic Products is another good one. Are um, these all online products? These are online and in store. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've seen these at Target and Walmart mainly because that's okay. usually where I go. But honestly, um, there's there's a large array of great natural hair products out there now in this day and age versus maybe 10 years ago if you were looking. You can really go into any natural hair product aisle. And again, if your hair is in good condition, probably find something that will gen generally work pretty well, mm -hmm. especially if you know how to seal your moisture in and things like that. I will say that it's um, more important to know what brands to not look for. Like things I've found like L'Oreal or things that are mm -hmm. seeming like they cater more towards uh, a looser hair texture, mm -hmm. like a straighter white people hair te mm -hmm. texture. You don't want to be using anything like that. That is usually going to dry our hair out just because it's not really made with our type of hair in mind. Um, but those first couple of brands that I mentioned, and honestly, if you see anything cheaper you want to try, um, what I would recommend is maybe looking at the back of your favorite hair care product and then looking at the back of ones that are known to be good, like Shea Moisture, Miel, Carol's Daughter. If the ingredients seem like they match up pretty well, there you go. It might mm -hmm. work pretty good for you. So it's a lot of good stuff out there today. Do you have any products personally, like through your brand? No, not okay. yet, but that okay. is in the works. But no, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. All right, so cool. So we're covering a lot of things that have to do with what goes on the hair to mm -hmm. take care of it. Let's talk about what goes in the body and that effect on hair, right? Mm -hmm. So does diet, I'm, I'm, uh, of course, water intake. So diet and water intake, mm -hmm. what type of, um, what does that play on as far as the growth of natural hair and just the, just the healthy state of natural hair? Right. So I know that when it comes to diet and water, that is those are things that people in exercise, those are things people do not want to get into when it comes to talking about hair, because it's going to be some of the hardest things to change, but yeah. it really does make a big difference. It exercise does. too. Oh, for sure. Okay, I didn't know For that. sure. Because the way that I always explain it to people is like, your hair grows out of your head, which is attached to the rest of your body. How hmm. would it not be influenced by the things that you're doing to your body? Good movement. Right. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. The better you're taking care of yourself, the healthier that your hair will at least be set up to be um, because there are other things that are going to need to be taken into consideration, of course. Mm -hmm. But at least as far as exercise is concerned, that's going to help good blood circulation to the scalp. Mm -hmm. Scalp health is one of the most important, prominent things in order to have, at least start setting yourself up to have healthier hair. Um, and that, of course, is going to help with your heart health, which is going to also help with the blood circulation and stuff like that. Um, 
And then for food, of course, you want to try and have a healthier diet because these are the same nutrients or whatnot that would be Going feeding your hair, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and water, water is just so important for natural hair inside and out. Like mm-hmm. water needs to be the base of any moisturizing routine that you have. It needs to be the base of any routine you have for your hair, period, really. Or just in life. Just anything yes. that you want to, like, you want to get better skin, you anything in general. Right. Like, water, for sure. Better mental health. Yeah. Like, water is, water is it. Water is, if you don't want to do anything else, please drink more water. Please. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's one thing we are getting better at in the black community. But in general, if you think about growing up, it was a whole bunch of Kool-Aid, Um, Mm -hmm. I'm from Maryland, so half and half, you know, lemonade, iced tea, whatever it was, a lot of sugary drinks, sodas and whatnot. Me kicking soda a couple years ago, shit, it was probably about 10 years ago now, me, you know, never drink. Well, I drink it maybe like once every four or five months. Right. But like, I don't like I only drink water, but me kicking soda and juice was one of the best things I've done. You know what I mean? Because like I can kind of rely on that in case I kind of slack off in other areas just because I'm drinking at least a gallon a day. And whatnot. I completely agree. Yeah, and and food in the in the black community, we're not the healthiest eaters as well. Soul food, most specifically, mm-hmm. which is actually bad for the soul if you think about it. But yeah, all of that goes to it. But we're getting better. You hear, you see a lot of black people nowadays. I don't eat beef or pork. Right, yeah, right, yeah. and that so makes me better. happy every time I hear that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yay. I'm the same when it comes to like my water intake. I'll be the same way. Like, oh, okay. If I slack off or um, a little bit or have a day where I eat something fried and I necessarily didn't want to, I'm like, well, all right, let me go chug some extra water and mm-hmm. try and make it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it definitely helps. Um, quick little fun fact. So I'm part of the BBL community, the Bar Brother Legion, right? <laughs> so, and I, I laugh at this because I, it was like something I seen where back in the Indian tribal days, right? When a dude would go bald, you know what they would, and then like their remedies and stuff didn't work. You know what they would try to do to bring back the growth? And I'm thinking of this because you mentioned blood circulation going through the head. They would hang dudes upside down for like 12 hours or some shit huh. to try to grow their hair back. Yeah. But when, when when dudes started, you know, passing out and dying, uh, I guess they figured, okay, maybe this ain't working or whatnot. You know, it's funny you bring that up because not too long ago, within the last six months to a year at least, there's been a really popular natural hair technique called the inversion method that a lot of people were trying to use in order to grow their hair, mm. where they would basically just sit up and lean forward with mm-hmm. their head between their legs for... However long, I don't know, um, either after massaging their scalp or while massaging their scalp because they believed it was supposed to promote growth. Do I think it did? I'm sure it probably did a little bit of something. But like I said, like kind of earlier, don't go out of your way to try these crazy methods because you think it's going to promote this one time quick growth. Just focus Mm -hmm. on like taking better care of it because people were passing out from it and there Mm. were bad experiences from that, too. When was this that they were doing that? Um, this, this is recent. I'm I'm sure people still are probably doing it today, but I know it was like a big trending thing, at least within the last year. Wow. That's crazy. (laughs) So let me ask you, what about, uh, pills? Like, Mm -hmm. do you think like pills is a good, cause I've seen that a lot as far as the girls want to get, you know, hair or nail growth. Mm -hmm. They'll take certain pills. I forgot what they were called. That would kind of stimulate that. Right. What do you think about that? Uh, I feel like biotin pills. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They definitely work. I've taken it myself just for really my nail health, not really like for my hair, but it definitely works mm-hmm. for sure. Um, a lot of products that can say they promote growth will have biotin in it, um, but I just feel like still don't rely on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be your one fail-proof method. If you want to do it in addition to other great things you're doing, I'm all for it for sure. Yeah, because it does work. So one thing I want to get your opinion on a controversial topic that has to do with the black woman's hair in general, natural or not, bonnets in public. (laughs) Let's hear it, Fran, and do not hold back on these people because they are rocking with you thus far, I promise. (laughs) (laughs) And I got you. What's your stand on bonnets in public? You for it or against it? I feel like I'm for it. And I honestly don't understand what is the big deal about it. Mm -hmm. I know um, some... Celebrity was making a big deal about it a few months ago. Um, Monique, I believe, um, in trying to say like, oh, girls or women, you need to basically have yourself put together when you go out in public. And Yeah, Monique, bas- me, Monique is not for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Basically saying so many words, like when mm-hmm. we get around the white people, put your best foot forward, mm-hmm. which I can understand. I can understand how you could have that opinion. And I don't necessarily disagree with people who feel differently than me, mm-hmm. but 
I just feel like if I have my hair in some twists or if I'm setting my hair for a style and I'm about to go somewhere, I don't care about these people that I'm going around when I want to Walmart real quick or go to the gas station or wherever I decide to go. If I want to have this bonnet on, it's going to be on. Mm. And what are you going to do? Mm. Like, so I don't feel like it should be. I honestly don't even know why it had to become a topic, why it had mm. to become a thing. Like I said uh, before, I feel like black women in general are so mm -hmm. scrutinized by society. But then when we get to black women, that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Like everything is scrutinized. And then it's like, even when it comes to our hair, how if whether we choose to be natural or choose to be relaxed or choose to wear a bonnet or choose to wear a wig or whatever it's like it always has to be talked about it always has to like become this thing if you want to wear your bonnet wear your bonnet like so what at least i mean bonnets are good for your hair they protect your hair from the elements so i mean i like it <laughs> yeah so i got silk pillow covers i bet so um i like it friend i like that here's my thing on it because I'm kind of stuck in between two spots. First and foremost, I think anybody who's doing something like you should do it. You shouldn't care about what other people think. On the other hand, I'm real big on uh, presentation and the image is is everything. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of answer where you said, where did this come from? I mean, it comes from the whole um, let's let's be real. It comes from and I and I put bonnets in the same category as do rag. That comes from the whole enigma of mm -hmm. when you see that you kind of consider you kind of already picture that person. You know what I'm saying as someone who may be loud. When you think of someone with a bonnet, most people's um, mm -hmm. uh, you know negative uh, stigma around it is oh that person may be loud or ghetto. When you see a do rag on a dude, you know what I'm saying the stigma that may uh, come from oh that person's a thug. Or da, da, da. But where did that even come from, right? It didn't come from our minds just because we didn't walk outside and think that that's coming from media and all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it starts with, first and foremost. Yep. And the media ain't controlled by us. Shit, BET ain't even controlled by us, is it? I don't no, think it is. I anymore. don't think so. Right. So the media ain't controlled by us, <laughs> but that's where it even started from the old, oh, the negative. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't care if, if uh, a woman wears it. If I had to choose one side, I would say not to just because, just to not feed into that. Um, negative enigma that they want to try to uh, run with. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, yeah. like you said, and like how I kind of feel, it's like, yo, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? But right. it's, it's it's a weird position because, all right, I don't want to put myself in a box that they created. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a weird position because like I, you know, do rags as well. I mean, I don't have hair, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even like if I did, I probably wouldn't wear a do rag in public. And it's weird because you see white and, you know what I'm saying, Latina and Puerto Rican people wear do rags all the time. Yeah. White people wearing do rags mm -hmm. now, heavy, right? Yeah. So it's it's a weird, it's a weird position, but um, I don't I think, it. yeah, yeah, it's a weird position. That's why I don't think one person just should just be like, yo, end all be all, do not wear bonnets in public, right. do not wear do rag in public. It's, it's weird. I think it's, it's all subjective. You know it is. I do feel like I I've, I completely agree with what you're saying. And that's pretty much my standpoint on it, too, um, as far as the pre the presentation aspect of things and how it's been unfortunately stigmatized to be like a louder ghetto thing. Um, but I do feel like also that when we can be seen out in public with it, and still present ourselves in a way that is presentable. Hopefully, it will be starting to change the direction of the way that it's been stigmatized. Mm -hmm. But, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of people do that. But that's not what's going to get recorded. That's not mm -hmm. what's going to get you right. know kind of blasted out there. That's yeah. all it is. A lot of shit happens. They choose what they want to blast out and whatnot. Only the only the ratchet bullshit gets sold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what they're going to use to. But I do like your approach. But we would have to control the media to, you know what I'm saying, do that. Right, right. So maybe like it would take a lot of creators such as yourself to kind of, you know, put that out there. Like the yeah. positive the positive uh, image behind that. Start a bonnet movement. There you go. Go everywhere in your bonnet. Yeah, yeah. And then show a lot of successful people making... Uh, moves making successful moves wearing the bonnets wearing the do-rags and whatnot <laughs> that actually sounds pretty cool i'm gonna have to look into that hey we may have started something here <laughs> that's what day by day is about um so listen before we get out of here uh i just want you to go in depth a little more as far as how people can find you i know you kind of said in the beginning but let's just run it back by them again how they can find you and what else you got coming uh for the people within the next you know few months to a year or whatnot all right. So if you want to find me, my Instagram is going to be at the college curls all together. No space. That is going to be T H E C O L L E G E C U R L S. Um, and then the YouTube is just going to be college curls. No space. 
Um, and then the Patreon is going to be College Curls as well with no space. Those are all of my platforms, all of the different ways that you can find me. Um, and besides those, I also do natural hair coaching. Um, it is a three month program fully, but you can choose to just take part in one month of it, just uh, a few weeks of it, different aspects of it. When you speak to me one-on-one, -on -one, we can figure it out. It's called Want Healthy Hair, Just Ask. And it's basically me working with you one-on-one, -on -one, helping you learn your hair, understand your hair, understand what it needs, how to make a routine for it, and how to make that routine in different ways so you're able to stay consistent with your lifestyle. Um, very affordably priced. If you are interested, you can DM me about that. And then just as far as for the next few months to a year, you can definitely expect to see more cartoons out on the platform on different types of natural hair information. In the past, I did a lot of basically what is type videos, um, trying to build a foundation of like, what is a protein treatment? What is a hot oil treatment? what is um deep conditioning just different things like that because a lot of people these are fundamental things they still aren't too sure of what these things are they've heard of it before but they may not know what it is um but just moving forward you can expect to see more videos on things of um how to make a routine that works why you shouldn't buy product recommendations um why protein is just as important for your hair as water or moisture and things like mm -hmm. that things where we're starting to get a little bit more in depth um, and then besides that, you can expect to see uh, more coming forward with the Patreon. I'm starting to do more behind the scenes content where you can actually see me creating my animation, see me on my day to day and my personal. Um, a lot of people have started asking for that because on the YouTube, you don't get to see that as much. <laughs> kind of going back to the question you asked way in the beginning about um, being uh comfortable kind of recording in front of a camera like why mm -hmm. i got into animating it was kind of to hide a little bit too mm -hmm. to be honest but now with the patreon starting to open up learn a little bit more about me and things like that um and also seeing behind the scenes of me taking care of my own hair and stuff of that nature and in the future as well this may not be so much in the next year but products and um hair tools will be coming yeah. looking forward to that yeah yeah i think that'll be a good move um, listen, friend, you done came here, you done dropped some gems, and the crazy thing is you just gave a taste. That's why y'all need to go ahead and uh, log into uh, Tap In With College Curls. And yeah, the videos, like I said, when we before we, you know, made this happen, when I was doing my research on you, like that was the first thing, first thing that I noticed with the animation joints. And again, that's big because it's different but effective. And then you control the video. You can put whatever you want in it the whole time instead of just you sitting there and kind of got to add stuff in the background and all that. Yeah, I like it. Well, listen, ladies thank and gentlemen, you. of course, ladies and gentlemen, I truly thank y'all for tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever your podcast is found, day by day is there. I truly thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure that y'all like and subscribe so that you can be kept up to date on future episodes. And again, we got to thank Francis, aka Fran from College Curls, stopping in and making this whole thing happen. But until next time, make sure that, make sure that y'all stay safe. Stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.